Hello and good morning all my precious brothers and sisters in Christ. Thought I'd come on here this morning and uh, got another message I want to uh, put forth today. And, and I really pray that this uh, opens the eyes of many and I pray it blesses the hearts of, of all who watch it. But before we get started today, um, let's go before the Lord in prayer. And, um, and let's just lift up and, and just praise God this morning before we even start this message. Father God, we come to you right now, Lord Jesus, and we just thank you from the very bottom of our hearts for what you did for us on Calvary. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love that you have bestowed upon us in these last days, Lord Jesus. Father God, we thank you for what you did for us on the cross of Calvary, Lord Jesus. Father God, you bled and you died so that we could be saved from an eternal damnation in hell. And oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for what you did for us on that precious, glorious day, Father God. Lord Jesus, I pray that, that the message that I preach today will be from you, Father God, and you alone by the power of your precious Holy Spirit. Father God, lift, lift all of us up today as we, as we deal with these, these times of the end, the times that, of, of the prophetic times of the end that we're going through. Father God, help us all to run this race, Lord Jesus, and to the finish line. And Father God, I pray if there's anyone out there that listens to this message that don't know you as their personal Savior, I pray today that you would convict their hearts, that they would ask you to come in their heart and save them, to forgive them of their sins, and to repent of their sin and just ask to be saved. And Father God, again, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you for the peace that comes from you and you alone. For you and you alone are so worthy to be praised. In your precious and holy, wonderful name we pray. Amen. All right. What I want to bring to you guys today is, um, you know, something's really been laid heavy on my heart. And, um, you know, this, uh, this Jade Helm thing that's going on. Uh, you know, I, I, I'd be a liar to tell you that I don't think it's rather interesting, you know, how this is all coming about. But first and foremost, I want to tell you all that I'm not afraid and, and I don't have any fear in, in, in me over this. And I think what's really important is we got to remember as brothers and sisters in the Lord, we got to remember that we have a savior. We have a father in heaven that is looking out after over that's looking out after, after over us and our father god in heaven will not ever leave us nor forsake us so we've got to remember church that we're not to have a spirit of fear we're not to have a spirit of worry we're not to have a spirit of 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 dread you know these are the moments in the last days that that god has called us to go out and reach the lost for him to go out and witness to, to a lost and dying world. And, you know, the thing about it is we got to be prepared, too, that as you witness to this evil world, we're going to get some backlash. It's going to happen. We're going to get people that's going to scoff and mock that hates us. That's going to happen. That's normal. But we must remember, greater is he that's in us than him that's in the world. I'm telling you, Satan knows that his time is limited. And I believe that he is thrown out all the fiery darts that he possibly can to try to to kill steal and destroy anyone that he possibly can but i tell you again greater is he that's in us than him that's in the world we have the power through christ jesus to battle the enemy and to run this race all the way to the finish line let me tell you i really believe that we are very very close to the finish line i really believe you know i have I have come on here, and many of us have come on here till we're blue in the face for several years now, putting forth the warning. And you know, it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. It's time to get serious. It's time to quit messing around. It's time to look in the mirror and examine ourselves and make sure that we are following what Jesus Christ wants us to do. Now, I preach to myself as I say that. I'm not just pointing fingers at you all. I preach to myself. It's time to quit messing around. It's time to get serious. 
You know, when I think of my lost loved ones and my lost friends, my lost family, I mean, I've got family that's very close to me that if they died today or if the rapture took place, they wouldn't be going. And it breaks my heart. But you know, the thing that irritates me the most are the people that claim to be Christians. The people that claim that they're living for the Lord, but yet they don't care about the lost. They don't care about the people out there that's ready to perish. They don't, they don't have the mindset. They're more worried about the material wealth. They're more worried about the things of the world instead of looking to people and looking to Jesus most of all, but looking to people and, 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 and picking out these people that, that need Jesus. You know, this, yes, Jesus wants us to have peace. God wants us to have the peace that surpasses all understanding. But this isn't a carnival, people. You know, we're, we're at a point right now where there's, there's no time to mess around. You know, like I said, we, many of us have, have, have preached this message until we're blue in the face. And there's just some people that just don't want to listen. And you know, as we read the Word, as we read the Bible, the Bible tells us there will be many that will be left behind. And you know, it, the people of the world that don't want to live for Jesus, they, they really have no clue what they're about to come up against. Let me tell you, I've mentioned this before. And I tell this to those of you who don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. When the tribulation takes place, and when the, the pit of hell opens up, there's going to be stuff walking on this earth that's going to be something straight from your nightmares. And, and you see this stuff happen, you see the stuff taking place. The Bible says people will be crying for the rocks to fall upon them, to hide them from the face of God Almighty. But when you see this stuff come to pass, you'll remember the days that you mocked and you scoffed and you come after us who love Jesus. You know, another thing that just breaks my heart is how so many in Hollywood and in the music industry have blatantly sold their soul to Satan. You know, I really believe in hell if they don't get their lives right. I believe that there's a special place in hell for people like that, that are deceiving our children, that are deceiving our loved ones and putting our loved ones in mind thoughts and mindsets where they should not be in these last days. They are tools for Satan and Satan himself. And right now, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Satan knows his time is about up and he is using the movie industry. He is using anything that's Jade Helm. He is using Jade Helm to put fear upon people that are lost. Well, and, and on the church, he's putting this on people to, to, to cast fear upon the church. We are not to have fear. You know, this whole, all the prophetic things going on and, and this Jade Helm, Helm thing. We ought to be taking this situation and saying, hey, <laughs> this is what I was talking about. And by the way, for you, Brother Todd, I'm looking at a red cardinal just landing on the ground over here. So praise Jesus. But listen, you know, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you know, the Bible says that there's going to be a great white throne judgment. The Bible says that there would be people that, well, unfortunately, many people that, that claim to be Christian, that's really not. And they're going to be crying out, Lord, did we not proclaim your name? Did we not heal people in your name? Did we not worship you? Did we not do this and do that and do this and do that? Only to have God the Father look at them and say, depart from me. 
you workers of iniquity, iniquity, for I know you not. You know, I want to read today. I've got some scripture that I want to share with you all today. And the message that I, I'm putting forth today is really going to be titled, it's going to have a title in it, The Peace of God. And I just want to read this to you all. I've got a few passages of scripture. And I'm going to begin in Philippians chapter 4. And uh, I'm going to begin in verse 4. And it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. All right, I got another one here for you. We're going to go in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. Starting in verse 3, it says, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. For he brings down those who dwell on high, the lofty city. He lays it low. He lays it low to the ground. He brings it down to the dust. The foot shall tread it down, the feet of the poor and the steps of the needy. All right. Now we're going to go to... Bear with me just a second here. We're going to go to John chapter 14, verse 27. And it says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. And also, let's go to John 14, 1. And it says, Let not your heart be troubled, you believe in God, believe also in me. And of course, this is going on to verse 2, 3, and 4. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Praise Jesus. You know what? We got a Father God in heaven that wants us to be in peace. He wants us to, to know that He has things in control. God, The Bible says that God's eyes go to and fro. God knows what we're doing every day. He knows what's going on. He knows what's going on. And you know, praise be to God. Yes, I made the last video I made, I, I just felt so alone. But you know, God reminded me, you're not alone, my child. You're not alone. And even set sent precious beautiful brothers and sisters to assure me of that you see i fall also and i am simply just a man but i'm a man that that realizes that i got to do the best i can but most of all i need to stay in repentance and in prayer before i'm a father i need to focus my life on him and not care so much about the things of this world. Because in the world, the world will bring you trouble. It will bring you sadness. Because the world is what it is. In these last days, it's an evil place. Yes, there are places you can go. You know, like my, my backfield back here. This is a, a place of tranquility for me. I can hear the birds praise Jesus in the morning or any time during the day. And I can come back here and just escape from the world for a little bit. There are beautiful places here that we can have wonderful talks with Abba Father. But He wants us to have peace. He wants us to have peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Don't let the enemy come in. And steal your crown. Don't let him steal your joy. Don't let him steal your peace. 
You know, many of us are going through situations, I mean, many different situations. You know, death in the family. We may have a husband or a wife or a, you know, a, a spouse, in a husband or wife that, that, that maybe isn't supporting us in this walk. Maybe they're backlashing us and, and, and maybe they're, they're treating you bad and saying things and mocking you. Even in those instances, God has not left us. He is there. He is in the midst. Church, and all of you out there that may not know Jesus as your personal Savior, we are at, very closely at, the finish line. I feel with every bone in my body that Jesus Christ is coming back very soon. I feel it in the air. Pardon me here a minute. <laughs> I almost had to sneeze. But I really feel the closeness of our, of our Savior. I don't know the day or the hour, but I feel with everything in me as I, as I look at the eastern skies this morning, there's a gentle breeze, actually a very cold breeze. <laughs> But there's a gentle breeze blowing as I speak. And I feel our Savior coming nearer and nearer and nearer. It's time to get serious. It's time to get serious. It's time to get serious. There's a lot of people out there that need to know Jesus as their personal Savior. A lot of people. And we've got to be there and encourage them and help them along the way. We've got to be there. Do not let the things of the world try to overcome you and bring you fear. Because fear is not what Jesus wants you to have. Again, I know I can't say this enough. I can say it until I'm blue in the face. we got to have peace. Do you not remember what Jesus went through on the cross? How has he hung there? He hung there. And still had peace in his heart. Because he knew what he was doing was the right thing so that we could be saved. And you know what? Love. Let's talk about love for a minute. You know, I, I honestly can say in my life, I've hurt people in the past. People that are very dear to me. And I've had people very dear to me hurt me too. But you know, I gotta say, you know, I, I repented for it and and I believe that God has forgiven me for the stupidity. You know, just words that I spoke that I shouldn't have said. You know, there's people that were very close to me that I lost trust in these people. I believe the lies of, of other people that I, I shouldn't have believed. I fell into that trap. You know, the devil hates my guts, and I've said that many times, and and I'm I'm not I mean I, I'm I'm not, you know, safe from his attacks either. I mean, yes, I'm protected by Christ Jesus. You know, he's my shield and my buckler. But as far as the temptation, as long as I've got this old sin flesh and I've got this old sinful body, I'm always going to be under subjection of temptation. But it's what I do with that temptation. It's what I do when I know I'm doing something wrong. How do I handle it? You know how I handle it? I take it to the cross. And you know, when I think about the people in my past that I've said some harsh words to, and 
I very irresponsibly quit trusting them. It breaks my heart. Because I know that the enemy is the one that was behind it. You see, if the enemy could come in and do something with the family, if the enemy could come in and set you against a brother or sister in Christ, don't think for a second that he won't jump on the chance. He will jump on the chance quicker than you can imagine. You see, Satan is a scumbag. And I can't stress enough, for those of us who live for Jesus, he hates our guts. We gotta love each other. And we gotta remember that in these last days, in these very last of the last of the last days, that Satan knows his time is coming up. He knows that his time is short. He knows. And he is throwing everything he possibly can at us. We've got to stay faithful. We've got to look in that mirror every day. And we've got to just look at ourselves and examine ourselves every day and say, Father, God, what can I do? What can I do to be closer to you? What can I do to live and work for you, Father God? Forgive me of any sins in my life. Forgive me, Abba Father. What can I do? Help me to battle this old flesh. Help me, Father God. Help me. We got to be real. And we got to get serious. I can't stress enough, even as I sit here. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. Total be beautiful blue skies, not a cloud in the sky. But oh, I feel the coming of our Savior. Oh, Abba Father, right now, as I lift up my hands to you in those eastern skies, Lord Jesus, Father God, we as a church that love you, we glorify your holy, 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 holy name, Lord Jesus. And Father God, we look forward to the day that that trumpet will sound. We look forward to the day that we will see your glorious face and see the love shining, the light that will come through those clouds. Father God, we look forward to seeing you with the angels wrapped around you, Father God. We look forward to hearing you call us home, Father God. For Lord Jesus, we are ready. We are ready and waiting patiently for our new heavenly home. Oh, Father God, we pray that as many as possible would come into your saving knowledge, Lord Jesus, that would come to know you as their personal Savior. Oh, Father, dear Jesus, we pray with all of our hearts, Father God, put them in our path that we may know and that we may have the words to speak, Father God, to a lost and dying world. And Father God, we cry with our hearts, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Come Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, sometimes I just like to sit here and just listen to the birds saying I praise you God I really believe that the animals in nature praise Abba Father is it any wonder that the tree sets its roots in the ground and grows as tall as it possibly can to get as close to heaven as possible. Amen. Well, I pray that this message blessed each and every one of you today. Remember, Jesus wants us to be at peace. He wants us to not fear. Read the Word about peace. There's many scriptures that talk about peace. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, today is a day of salvation. Time is running out. You don't want to be left on this earth. This earth is going to be nothing but hellacious, awful, demonic. It's going to be worse than you could ever imagine. 
all around you. The air will be thick of evil once the church is gone. And if you don't know Jesus, all you got to do is believe that he died on that cross and rose the third day. And you must admit to him that you are a sinner and ask him to forgive you of your sins and ask him to save you and to lead you every step of the way. And if you pray that prayer earnestly and sincerely, you are saved. And my, my precious brothers and sisters, I thank you so much for the beautiful comments on the last video I made. It was so uplifting to know and so precious to know that I have so many people that love me, so many brothers and sisters that love me, and I, I praise God for all of you. I praise God for each and every one of you. Don't be afraid. Cast your burdens upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid. Stand up straight. Get some grit in your crawl. Follow Jesus and soak in. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Soak in his beauty. Soak in Abba Father's rest. For he loves you so much. Father God, I come to you and, and I thank you by the power of your precious Holy Spirit. I, I thank you so much, Abba Father, for this message today. I thank you for guiding me every step of the way. I thank you for the beautiful scripture that comes from your holy word. Lord Jesus, I pray for my beautiful, beloved church family. I pray that they would have peace and not be afraid that surpasses all understanding. Father God, I, I pray for those that may not know you. I pray by the power of conviction that your precious Holy Spirit would convict the hearts of them, that they may ask you to come in their heart and save you today. Put people in our path, Father God, that we can minister to, people that are hungry to want to know you, Lord Jesus. Protect us. Protect all of our brothers and sisters that are being persecuted all over the world, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father God, give them the peace that surpasses all understanding. Abba, Father, we love you. And we praise you and we glorify your holy name. Oh, God, I put my beautiful brothers and sisters at your feet. And I pray for every situation every hurt, every pain. I lift them up to you, Abba Father. We glorify your holy name, for you are an awesome God. In your precious and holy name we pray, amen. All right, well, I pray that you all enjoyed this message. I love each and every one of you so much. And I, I, I want to ask that you all would pray for my hands. I've got carpal tunnel. Um, real quick, I just want to mention, I do have carpal tunnel in my hands, and I just ask that you would lift my hands up. My hands just get really sore. And I apologize if it takes me a while to answer comments, or, or if I don't get a chance to answer a comment. A lot of times it's very painful for me to type comments and answer comments. And I want each and every one of you to know that I listen to every comment that you send me. I listen to every one. And I read every one. And if I can possibly answer them, I will. But I thank you for the beautiful comments and encouragement that you all send me. It means more truly than words can ever say. All right. Well, God bless you all. In Jesus Christ, most holy, holy name. I love you all. Keep looking at those eastern skies. Jesus Christ is coming. All right. Goodbye.